In a world where comic books reign supreme, one superhuman journalism team holds the fate of the world in their hands. John Runyon and Tom Devine are a comic book look. such a fucking landmark for us. We're so excited <laughs> to bring it to you guys. Oh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, your number one and only greatest comic book TV show on the internet, interwebs, and veteranmediajunkies.com. Yeah. I am Tom. We got Mr. John, at sign John on demand. And Skyler, at sign Skyler Bolks, aka and the conductor on the one-way train to Awesome Town. Awesome Town. It's, it's 50 minutes up. <laughs> Yo. We're totally taking it to Awesome Town. Thank you guys for who have been here since number one. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. All you guys who have picked up along the way and kept watching, we do appreciate it. It's uh, been a wild ride, and we're excited for the 50th episode. Hopefully you checked out our sick new opening. Um, we loved it. I hope you did, too. Skylar put a lot of work into it. Um and, and it was awesome. And uh, hopefully we bring to you uh, some new things today's show and have it be super exciting. Alright, comic book lookers. This is Skyler with a comic book look. I'm here introducing our new segments. Um, you'll see, you will still see the couch talk segments uh, that you guys are all used to. John and Tom, uh, maybe a guest, maybe a Skype guest sitting on the couch, the comic couch, I like to call it, couch talk segment. Um, these segments will be uh, slightly different. You'll be seeing uh, some recurring. Some of them will just come in every once, you know, they'll come in very sp sporadically. You'll get one and we won't see it for a little while and then we'll bring it back. But if you tell us what your favorites are, we can bring those to you more and more often. And to introduce segments, I have something that we feel very strongly about here at a comic book look. Beer. Absolutely. Introducing six pack of the month. Our new rating system will be based on the month's six pack, which this month we have Crow Peaks 11th Hour IPA. I'm a huge IPA fan. Um, I've been scouring over my local store. Uh, they won't give us any money or free beer, so I'm not going to give them give you their name. But scouring them for new IPAs, new hoppy beers. I'm a hophead till I die. Love the hops. Love the bitterness. A little bit of grapefruit tinge is great. This beer has all of those. Crow Peaks 11th Hour IPA. It's from Spearfish, South Dakota, brewed in the Black Hills. This is our home state, and we've all been to Spearfish. Everyone that lives in South Dakota has been to Spearfish. We've been to Sturgis. We've been to Rapid City. Sturgis, the biggest motorcycle rally of all time, uh, just about 20 minutes outside of Spearfish. So I'm sure they're probably looking to sell a lot of their beer to bikers when they come into town. But they did not skip any steps on this IPA. It's a strong tasting IPA. It's got that hoppy bitterness to it, but it's got a nice kind of a frothy start. Um, really smooth. Not too bitter. You know, you don't, it's not a, it's, you know, it's not something that you're going to feel like you're drinking out of a rusty bucket. But it does have some kind of a, Kind of sweetness on the start, a little bit of a grapefruity flavor, that uh, hoppy bitterness you're always looking for when you reach for an IPA. And this will be the strong point of our rating system. We will be rating comics from here on out 
based on a six pack of beer. The six pack of the month will always be the image you'll see at the bottom of your screen when the guys give their review of a comic. You know, six a full six pack of beer, that's a strong comic. Two beers, uh, you know, you probably want to skip that one. But from six pack of the month, this is Skyler, and we'll go back to couch talk. Here. Right on. What do you say, guys? Well, we're definitely happy to be here. Absolutely. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm super happy to be here. I mean, I'm just ready to get the show going on, and... What is that? Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. John, what? with the phone. All right. Are it you went kidding? off during my segment. <laughs> this is our It's going off in the middle. Wow. It's, it's our, our 50th back. show. Wow. And, of course, Mark. Oh, Fat stack of comics is going. Oh, yeah. great. If it's going off during the show, it's got to be important. You All right, you better answer it. All right. Hello? Mark? What up? A comic book love. <laughs> How you doing? Doing good, man. How about you? Doing good. We're just rocking it out right here, doing our 50th issue, and uh, definitely uh, getting some glares on the couch right now. <laughs> Mark, what are you doing? This is our 50th issue. You picked this time to call? Oh, my God. You guys, for you do not know, this is Mark from Fat Stack of Comics, the second coolest... Oh. TV show on the interwebs about comics. You guys better be checking him out. And, you know, Mark, what brings you to interrupt our show today? Man, I just wanted to wish you all a happy 50th episode. Nice. Just nice. rocking it out. Right on. No, we definitely appreciate that, man. So, uh, you're, you're rocking it out there. You're doing your thing with Chloe. Um, is Chloe out there? Hey, John. Hey, what's going on, hey, man? Hey, Chloe. Hey, Chloe. Me and you, the cool ones. We have long hair. <laughs> Which was an awesome move, by the way. If you guys haven't seen that, what stage seven, right? Uh, yeah, I think. Ready for stage seven? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stage, seven, yeah. stage seven. Check out stage seven of Fat Stack of Comics for such an amazing graphic. Yeah. Mark and I have the same mean <laughs> mug on, and then Tom and Chloe have the same shirt pose and long hair awesomeness <laughs> and prettiness factor. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, guys. One. That's right. Well, we want to thank you guys for calling in on our 50th episode and wishing us a, a good one. We are going to rock it tonight. And you guys, you have got to just sit down and watch all of Fat Stack uh, Comics in a row, all That's the amazing. stages. By the end, you'll be off of your chair rolling on the ground laughing. These two guys oh, together yeah. so well. They so, have yeah. fun with it. That's, that's what I love. Definitely. It's totally awesome. Right on. And also, be on the lookout. We're talking about doing a, um, a joint episode with them. Uh, <clears throat> our people are talking to their people. You know, we're having board meetings left. It's really exactly. hard. You know, me and Mark have this image thing about, you know, so I don't know about two of us being on the same screen. You know, it's, it's hard. Our beards are going to fight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whose hat is cooler? Uh... uh <laughs> it's just all logistics. At it's this logistics. Point. It's it's difficult. We keep it business though. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, I just I just heard from your guys' lawyers. They were very kind. So I mean, it's no it's no problem. I think we'll be able to work it out. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, again, thank you guys so much for taking the time to give us a call. And uh, definitely, to all you comic book love viewers, other check them out. And soon you'll be checking all five of us out on the same episode, and it's going to be amazing. Yep. Yes, so. indeed, guys. So. Say what up to Fat Sack of Comics, and you guys give a shout out, and you know, De thank you. Definitely, Mark. You want to give him your signature finishing line? Stay action packed, and leave stack be fat. fat. Oh, wow. that's awesome! All right, well, thank you guys again for calling in this evening. Okay. No problem, man. All right, you guys have a good one out there. No problem. Appreciate you having us on. No problem, man. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye, bye. See you. Later. All right, well, so it wasn't too big of an interruption, right. at least. I guess we yeah. can live with that one. I guess I won't have to edit it out. I'll leave it there. It was all right. <laughs> no, but seriously, check they're those guys so awesome. out. They are awesome. They're super cool, and they're repping awesome comic book TV. So, you know, you got to check them out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, shit, John, 50 episodes. Did you ever think we would go 50 deep? Nah, man, I remember when this was just a, a gleam in our eyes at work as we are staring at people's accounts. <laughs> and reading comics while we're getting yelled at on the phone. Yeah, it is this crazy is that that has yeah. gone this long. Definitely. 50, yeah. I mean, it, it is exciting. It and, is. I mean, you can 
slowly seeing how we've gotten better and more comfortable and brought you better material and you know mm -hmm. we started talking about you know thunderbolts and a few different uh, books that we you know we like together and it's grown a lot and we've hopefully we've gotten a lot better skylar came on board and then started showing us how you should put editing videos together um and we we grew more and uh we continue to hopefully change and be new still and um still be awesome and you know still tuesday nights on inveterate media junkies you got to be there every tuesday comment and it just makes the fan base and community grow grow even more um yeah and uh you know i'm just i'm just ecstatic that we did get this far and i mean i never thought when we did our first show that we would be skyping creators for books right. you know yeah. or having emails from all these creators that would like to get on our show and it's just really humbling and awesome to have ha to have a girl this far yeah. and we have viewers that have watched since some of the first crappy episodes oh, yeah. all the way up till now and people are still with us and that exactly is, yeah. that is the most exciting thing that's why we do it we're here for you exactly kuru ed comic book dude yeah. i mean the, you guys have been around forever uh and the, you guys are awesome that you have uh start checking us out and getting our word out phil don't i can't let you go to um and uh, we do appreciate it but yeah i mean 50 episodes what is your favorite episode john yo <laughs> i don't know man uh, the Easter one, I just had some good punchlines. <laughs> Tom, Tom goes, John, you're on effing fire, yo, whatever. And uh, I don't know, we're, uh, I, I kind of miss the Easter Bunny, so, you know, he might yeah. have to make an appearance. I think the Easter Bunny, Easter Bunny may make an appearance. I we'll hope see. so, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was probably one of my favorites, though, just because it's so ridiculously huge. That yeah. made me really happy. Totally. Uh, what about uh, you? How about you, Skylar? My favorite would have to be the Marvel episode, actually. Um, the one about like reviving it. I feel well, no. We were going to say it was, we're all good it, things. It was a, yeah. It was a full uh, review, a full episode yeah, just yeah. on Marvel comics. It was like one of your action. first ones that you came to. It was. Yeah. It was pretty early on, but I thought like the banter back and forth was really fun, and you know, it's something the big two. I'm not very familiar with the big two, so I I like to learn about it a little bit, you know. Yeah. But I'm not, you know, I don't go to the bookstore and buy books from Marvel or DC. So. What's there to yeah. learn? We're right here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I love that episode. I, I absolutely love that episode. It's a, it's a great one. It goes on for a long time. And me and John, you know, that's Marvel. John is Marvel to its core. Oh, it's been Marvel yeah. forever. I mean, you know, grew up on Marvel. And so that was a big episode for us. We both had a lot to say. So that one's definitely awesome. My favorite one is either... Top five creators. I just thought it was fun to do a list of my favorite top five creators. Yeah. It was, you know, I got to do a list of all the ones I really liked. And looking back, I still, I'm glad I went with that. And I, I put Scott Snyder on that list, and that was like a good year ago. And I still put him on good the list. And, yep, I, he's good call. still with him. Um, you know, I don't think I had Hick, Jonathan Hickman on that list, and I think he might have moved up too. Um, but also, I really like that one and the Image episode. I think I got to showcase yeah. all yeah. the books that I like so much are from Image, and I think that that issue was just fucking bomb. So check out those go those ones if you guys want to see some awesome. I think um, if, if you're gonna double up, I gotta. I can't remember his name, but our interview down. with the creator of Marlowe, Aaron, yeah. Aaron Nelson. Aaron yeah. Nelson. Yeah. There, there he is. There he is. That was oh, he was such a great interview. He was oh, a really great he guest. He was a lot he was of prepared. fun. Yeah, and dude. And he loved to talk, and he was funny, and he was interesting, yeah, and he was the uh, our first interview, and it was nerve wracking, and mm -hmm. but it was still so it turned out to be great, and yeah, I mean, I, I also love that episode, and I know a lot of people have checked out Marlo because of it, and it, Marlo's a great book, so I'm glad that people have. So yeah, Definitely. great, great issues. Um, I think I loved uh, when we went from the like old opening crappy one that I put together to like an actual opening that we taped that was actually fun too yeah. um, when we did that um, but yeah I mean 50 episodes it's it's crazy that we're still going but yeah we're gonna continue to rock it yes indeed um, but yeah so I mean what, what you guys got anything else that uh, you want to bring up or anything before we dive into any of the other stuff that we're gonna do today I don't know I, I definitely you know since we're doubling up on those faves one that I no, I mean I totally like is actually that uh, religion one yeah. So twelve, issue twelve. But uh, it was that was fun, you know. I looked like a lumberjack, though. I had this big head of hair, and my beard was all blah, you know. But it was uh, it was pretty epic. That was back in the dark ages because we didn't have all these cool lights now. And 
sweet camera yeah. or anything. You know, <laughs> the dark ages. Like you're bringing up your your old uh, hairstyle, and it actually is hilarious to go back and look through the thumbnails. <laughs> yeah. Because in some of them, it it looks like there's two completely different people than yeah. the one before. Yeah. Like, you know, John has a hat on. Next episode. Like, kind of side cocked, and then you know he's got a bunch of hair, and it's like those those aren't the same people. Yeah, and then you get shaved. Oh head. yeah, I mean, yeah. dyed my hair. Yeah. And sometimes Tom has his hair out, mm -hmm. and you think maybe there's a girl on the couch. Chloe, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I I think that is hilarious. If you scroll through all the videos, the frames, I mean, you can just like literally see John's beard grow, and it is fucking awesome. She <laughs> effect. Yeah, uh, so that's also beer. funny. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and it's fun to have fifty episodes, like, yeah. and to see like people. Well, there's more than fifty episodes. Yeah, yeah. we had one exactly. shots. The one this, I, yeah, yeah. The, we have some one shots. Two one shots and the yeah. So I mean, we're about fifty three, but I mean f issues. It's it's uh, nice to you know go through all those. Yeah, yes. And there's a lost episode that is only some of you guys saw <laughs> of John's birthday party. <laughs> It's John so made us take the take it down because he was afraid people at work well, were going to watch it. At the time, and now I'm like, I don't care, so I'll probably put it back up if someone has it. All right, maybe yeah. we'll get the lost episode, but it's a <laughs> righteous time at this awesome birthday party that John threw when it wasn't even his birthday, and it yeah. was fucking bomb. <laughs> and we just had a blast. And I we got some good video yeah. uh, of John just being wasted. <laughs> It was pretty stellar. And just being raunchy, too. It was great. So how's that different from every week? Oh, uh, yeah. true. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, all right, yeah, guys. Um, one thing that we're going to do um, is, you know, do these segments. Um, yeah. You know, we're going to start doing little ones where we're going to kind of switch it up from just us three sitting here, us two sitting here, talking comics. And we want to, you know, give you some, you know, switcheroo and what's happening. And so these segments are just going to be short versions of reoccurring themes that um, come back. You know, maybe we'll review graphic novels or a single issue or a back issue or, you know, different things. And um, today, I mean, I'd like to just uh, jump right out. And I'm, uh, my segment I want to do and I want to continue to do in the future is called Library Comics. And so um, here's my segment. Library Comics, guys. A lot of you don't know this, but um, you don't always have to pay for your comics. A lot of times, your own town is going to have a library, and they got tons of books, and I know that scares you. Who wants to go to a library? I know you crazy geeks don't. Well, you should. You remember them in school. They were awesome. And if you go into them now, they got this little section called graphic novels, and usually there's tons of adult, aimed at adults, graphic novels that you can choose from. A lot of times, there will also be a you know, a section for kids and have, uh, you know, teen area for superheroes and graphic novels that way as well, or even single issues. In Sioux Falls, South Dakota, our library is, we're lucky enough to have them all. I mean, we have tons of graphic novels. If you put one down that you want, they'll order it for you. And you can also, you know, just browse through everything they have. They also collect Action Comics, Amazing Spider-Man, Batman, um, Fantastic Four, and Superman. And so they'll on, if you want to just be ongoing with those titles, you can go to the library every month and you can either check them out or you can just read them at the library. Um, I love doing that. And recently I picked up uh, The Hero Discovered Mage, which is this great book from Image, um, all by Matt Wagner, who is you know, a fan favorite, um, and I've never read any. He has invented uh, Mage and Grindel, creator of those um, these comics that uh, lasted a while. And this is kind of like a superhero that doesn't want to be the superhero and this was long before that was a trope that you saw a lot um and you know he continues to do good and all these little things around his um world are kind of get weird there's magic introduced these characters are introduced there's this evil corporation that's introduced and they're just kind of slowly pitting each other together in a really clever way um and building really good relationships. There's a lot of cool magic things that um, they bring into the modern world, like they make a uh, baseball, baseball bat be super magic, or they have um, this um, like weapon of the devil that they turn into a staple gun. And it's uh, just kind of funny how they do those different things but still take themselves very seriously. And it's uh, just a really like almost coming-of-age tale of, you know, may or of the main guy here becoming a hero and he's like at the beginning you know he's always like i'm not a hero i don't believe in any of this shit um but you know he slowly 
he comes into the world, and it's definitely worth a check out. And this sucker costs forty nine ninety five. So if I wanted to read it, I would have had to shell out fifty fucking dollars. But instead, I got to read this for free from my library. Thank you so much, Sioux Falls Library System, and be sure to check out yours. Yeah, guys, Library Comics. Check out your local Definitely. library. Keep it uh, local. Yeah, obviously, obviously. Oh. Oh yeah, guys. Well, shit, man. Do you want to re review some of these recent comics? We are for issue fifty. Going to talk about some recent comics that we have come out. We are definitely going to talk about some recent comics that come out. All right. You want to? You want to? You got some to talk about? Oh. I do. I do. I do. Let's hear them. Let's you right. jump right into it, brother. All right, man. Well, first of all, you know, salutes, hats off. The symbiote is back in this biz it, 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 The symbiote detected this horrible thing that was going to hit the big screens. And it decided to step its game up. Incredible. Impeccable timing. You know? Venom, uh, issue 20. Um, just hats <laughs> off to you. Uh, interesting little tidbit here uh, about Venom is I actually had a Twitter follower, Colin Bunn, added me, on tw like, followed me on Twitter at my at John and the Man account, which is, like, pretty sick. I was like, yeah, right dude. on, man. Six gone. I love that yeah. fucking book. So this is, uh, this is going really well so far. We're on Savage 6 Part 3, so it's, you know, you know Sinister 6 spinoff, whatever. But the, the villains are just, like, these off villains, you know, offbeat ones a little bit. But I just, I'm digging the storyline. It's finally not all about the bang, 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 but you see a little bit of symbiote action. The, so, yeah, the and that's little, what you wanted, because right. before it didn't seem like your Venom when he right. was, like, Because like it's just, like, Captain costume. America yeah. with a gun and <laughs> a symbiote. <laughs> so it just it wasn't as as cool and now we're just we're really just we're seeing the knives going crazy you know people getting stabbed and killed uh, middle aged men in their apartment in their undies whitey tidies nonetheless uh, you know I mean I just I can't tell you enough how pleasantly surprised I am because I fell off this book at issue five exactly so I've been I've been on since about issue seventeen now oh you jump just back to on check there. them on because I oh, saw yeah. what Jack Lantern's one of the bad guys uh, so I. Uh, I definitely, uh, just hats off to you, Team Venom, like, I guess I'm on Team Venom, too, with that jersey I got. Fuck yeah, so, you uh, and you just love Venom. I just love Venom. Love. So, got anyways, that sweet oh, Angel oh, Medina. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, no, it's it's not. No, I'm saying that sweet yeah. Angel Medina. Oh, the, the prince. Print, print yeah, 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 yeah. Sick Venom. Yeah, so I just, um, hats off to you again, I'm just so relieved, because I was just, this, every time I saw this on the shelves, I just got really dark-hearted inside. <laughs> So, anyways, um, using our brand new spank and new rating system, I'm going to go ahead and give this five and a half beers because I already cracked an open and took a sip. Nice. So. That's still a very good rating. Um, I'm going to jump right into here, The Walking Dead, issue 100. Can you believe this sucker has gone for Ooh. 100 issues? I got the Frank Quietly cover. Mm. Um, there was, like, infinity amount of covers, but this one piqued my interest because you can see like the bones that are attached to her teeth and her gums are rotted away with no lips. It's yeah. really it's, pretty it's disturbing awesome and awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean it's, I'm not even going to really review the book so much as in just kind of talk about this because it, um, Walking Dead is something that should not be spoiled. Um, it, this is a great book. Um, obviously the TV show does very well. But what the TV show lacks, the book can bring you. When the special effects can't step up and show you zombies all the time, the book can. There are times when you think, oh, there's, you haven't seen enough zombies, but that's always building up for something very well. And it is, you know, enough about the people more than it is about the zombies that you really do care about what happens. You feel for Rick, you feel for Michonne, and... I mean, it's just, uh, it's so cool what direction they're taking meeting all these new people and uh, this big conflict between this bad gang and uh, it, it's just, it's just so good. And I just love to see that we made it 100 issues. It's crazy. And it's also crazy to read 100 issues. I have the mo the first 48 issues I just have because of the compendium. Then I have a couple trades and then the rest I collected in issues. And it's just uh, one of the few books that I have over 100 issues of one comic, uh, and so, you know, The Walking Dead, Milestone, we hit 50, they hit 100, Perfect same week. Timing. Kirkman? I was actually watching some, uh, uh, San Diego Comic-Con footage, uh, Kirkman was there celebrating his 100th issue, and they had a zombie apocalypse survival course. Nice. That was like an obstacle course you were run by, you know, uh, Kirkman had actually run through it. 
and uh, they had some footage of him. And did he uh, make it, or did he, he get bit? Oh, I don't know. He he <laughs> probably wouldn't have made it if the zombies were real. He came out with blood down because the zombies are covered in blood. They're really convincing, you know. There's some <laughs> oh of them just God. can't use their legs, so they're crawling after you. Oh and there's all kinds of different obstacles, and you know, blood filled this and that. You have to crawl underneath, and it looked really cool. But he had he had some blood streaks down his shoulder. Oh, so I don't contact. Know. I Maybe think, we won't get issue 101. He's yeah, I think, I think he was infected. <laughs> I think he is an infected now. That's a, that's a comic book exclusive right there. <laughs> Robert Kirkman gets infected by zombies. zombies. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Up next, Wolverine and the X-Men, Lucky 13. Finally, you know, this uh, this series it was a little on and off for a while there, but uh, AVX, you know, if you take this hideous banner off the top, my God, I mean, I would love that that cover. I'm a huge fan of Gladiator from the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. Love you, him. We actually kind of get familiar with him during the Dark Phoenix saga. So it just seems like anything Phoenix brings the Shi'ar a knock in. This is actually kind of a backstory of, a, you know, her name is Warbird um, or Deathbird. You know, she's basically Kid Gladiator's um, bodyguard, and it's just it's her backstory, and it's it's actually really interesting to get to see some of that Shi'ar structure, uh, you know, the floating cities, you know, you just don't get to see that in the animated series, so for me, it kind of took me back to when I used to rock that show in the 90s, some of the older issues, and so oh, yeah. forth, and they've had brushes with the Shi'ar in the past, it, you know, exactly. I, have, I have a few back issues too, but all in all, just a lovely, uh, lovely trip down memory lane, I suppose, and seeing Gladiator get his ass kicked. It's kind of surprising, because he's like the alien Superman in Marvel yeah. U. Oh, yeah. Um, so, very uh, interesting, um, but uh, I'm very curious to see how the next issue goes, because he's squaring off against a little Phoenix Phoenix 5. <laughs> Phoenix <laughs> Force 5, yeah. So Lame. Yeah. All right. Issue is good, but yeah. Well, my next one is Punk Rock Jesus. Uh, this is just is a must-buy. Um, Sean Murphy is um, talking about uh, Jesus, and he's an atheist, and uh, this this is Jesus Christ is an atheist, and he's just a punker, and uh, it's fucking pretty bomb, good cliffhanger, great first issue. Um, I read that Sean Murphy, he's writing and drawing this, had been had this in the works for a long time, and now it's finally out. This is a six-issue miniseries out from Vertigo. So Vertigo, number one, great jumping on point. I know some other people talked about, you know, when to jump on. Well, number one, you know, you can always jump on. And this may not be, you know, for everybody, but, you know, give it a chance, guys. Sean Murphy almost is just, if you like art, it's almost just buying, worth it just for the art. I mean, it's all black and white. Um, he did Joe the Barbarian, probably the next, like, most notable um, one that he did. And it's, uh, he, his art is unlike any other, and it's so good, so... Punk Rock Jesus, um, since I did read this though, um, you know, and I didn't do a rating system on Walking Dead because I wasn't rating it, um, this is, I'll give this, um, four beers out of, um, six for the story and six, a six pack in the art. I have to break it into both because though the story may be lacking a little bit, you guys need to understand that this art brings it up so much. Um, so I guess overall, I guess I can just say five, five beer. Right on, man. Well, I actually picked up the AVX fighting thing, <laughs> four of six. The but, AVX uh, fighting thing. Hopefully uh, that's what it says on the cover. That's exactly <laughs> what it says to me on the cover, because there is absolutely no story to this. It's just the square-offs. But what intrigued me was the Psylocke versus Daredevil. All right. Sensory versus Telepathy, right? Yeah. So that, I'm just going to spoil the hell out of yeah, this one. Exactly. Because if you actually buy these things and take them seriously, come on, man. Um... You know, Daredevil versus Psylocke, he has the extra sensory thing. She actually tries to read his mind, and it drives her crazy because of that sensory <laughs> overload. Bad idea, bets. Good work. Bad it idea, ended up, bets. It ended up being a draw, because he retreated. Because she got her te her knives out of energy or exactly. whatever, and he was like, oh, crap. Psy sword. Yeah. Pew. Boom. Uh, Thor versus Emma Frost. Any guesses? Thor versus Emma Frost? Thor. Thor, yeah. I mean, Are you ready for this? Doesn't matter, Thor won in my mind. Yeah. When, so uh, Emma's standing, I see, and Thor's not. Emma Frost. He, uh, no. she, she turns into her diamond form at the end, and he swings his mighty hammer at her and shatters her and sends her up. But what must come up must come down, so it rains diamond shards all over him, and he's just like, oh, crap, and then falls. And she reforms that's herself. How he, that's how he dies. Yeah. Diamond shards. Diamond just and those Emma Frost can hammer. regrow herself. Yeah. What is she? Because fucking the, Evil Team 1000 the, after being sprayed in fucking... Check out those legs. 
<laughs> Yo, I don't know, you guys. This, this, I, I'm sorry. And this is no disrespect to whoever writes and draws it, because it's it's strictly entertainment. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It really is. But th this has no relevance to why I read comics whatsoever. I was just kind of curious to see how it would go. And I'm a frost, of course. Exactly. That. That's oh, just a, sometimes so, you have to fuel the nerd on you. Know, yeah. Who would so, win? Between I'm gonna them? go ahead and give this one just kind of a three beer out of six, just because. It is what it is, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I'm not, yeah. It's always fun to watch superheroes fight each other. Exactly. <laughs> Can you talk about Well, that? I'm going to go as far <laughs> fucking possibly away from that kind of book as you possibly can. This is <laughs> Brian Wood, the massive, this uh, really cool, like, almost like post-accident um, slow burn about this group of people on a ship, and, and I mean, I it, it is really deep and a lot of dialogue, There's, it's not like a straight lay story, a lot of dialogue to build up this story in this world, and it's what Brian Wood does really well. Um, the first one I thought was, you know, was good, um, but, it, you know, I wanted more. This gave me a little bit more, and you saw more, but still, probably, I, I'll give this um, four beers out of six, um, because I just think that, you know, it could pro possibly go a little faster, things more things would happen, but I understand where Brian Wood is coming from. This initially, when I heard an interview from Brian Wood, was this came about from Dark Horse Presents, and he wanted to do an ongoing series, and this, so they gave him the first three issues, and if he sold well, he could get more. And so then I, you know, I checked in previews. Uh, me and Jose on Inveterate Media Junkies were talking about this in the last, um, you know, you can write down what you got that week and. Um, you know, I checked the previews, and they do have the number four. So this is going to be an ongoing, the massive, here's another great jumping on point. If you want to really heady read an indie book and, you know, support good out uh, comics that are, you know, different. Um, and, I mean, the art's great. Uh, another thing, I mean, it's very clean. All the lines are very clean, you know, very, um, it looks like even sometimes, like, com a lot of computers for backgrounds and stuff. But it, it just is, gives such a clean look that I, re I really do like it. Nice. So, yeah. Four beers out of five, or four beers out of six. Shit, man. Try to get used to this new system Scott came up with. He came up with his own. Go well, figure. He so about if, beer. So if uh, it sucks, you blame him. Yeah. Well, all it was right. It mostly Tom's idea, but oh, was six, pack, six pack a month was my idea. Yeah, yeah I was going for 12 pack, but no one listened to me. Let's do dirty 30 of the month. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Up next, Scarlet Spider 7. All of the power, none of the responsibility. All I gotta say, it's about time we have a quality spider title out there. <laughs> my goodness, has it been forever since Sinister Spider-Man? Kane, of course, is just reluctantly being a hero, inadvertently doesn't really want to be a hero, and I love his attitude. I love his costume, I love everything about him. He's just like, evil. it's so hot here. Because he's like down in Houston. <laughs> Just, you know, it's 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 completely different. And it's just such a funny... And I really... You know what I dig is the cover. Like, it's just... It's oh, that's a good simple, cover. but it's fun. I love the, the coloring on it. Um, yeah. And lo and behold, no ugly banner at the top. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's definitely a break. I If you guys aren't checking the series out by now, totally check it out. That's what I say. I'm going to give this one kind of a five beer out of six. Damn. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dark Spider-Man always has John and Tree. Yes. Is he evil? Probably. Yes. Is he... <laughs> if if the person is evil, then John likes him. If he's nice, John's like, oh, this book's okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just kidding, John. No, it's true. Um, but I will do... For, to wrap up my books that were just interesting, this is deserves episode 50 kind of stuff, is... <laughs> Secret Agent Poyo got his own comic book. The world's most deadly cockfighter is back for this awesome, crazy one shot that is from Chu. Um, but it is, you know, it's not a part of the regular book. This it is. I mean, it deals with things that are going on in the regular book, but it is a one shot. It is, you know, absolutely ridiculous, but just as awesome as. Um, a uh, cockfighting USDA agent um, could be. And uh, he's deadly. Nobody is... It's like, in the whole entire True series, there's been really strong people, there's been tough people, smart, but nobody is as deadly or is, as cunning as <laughs> Pollo. And he came from behind and everybody's wanted more and he got his own one Who is just a chicken? 
Yeah. Oh, he's just this. He, this he is him. Chicken. This is Pollo. Okay. He's a cock fighter. Not like the person that owns the cock. He's the cock, <laughs> and he fights other good chicken. Talk, guys. Good talk. Oh and he gets hurt, so he gets the mechanic things, just like choose partner. And uh, he just becomes more deadly than ever. And it's definitely something you should be afraid of because he is the master. And it's almost worth buying this um, so for the epic, for the last the last um, they do have a bunch of great artists do a bunch of sweet ass pinups. And every single one of them is just absolutely awesome. Nice. Just so many great ones. Ben Temple Smith and a bunch of other really good art artists uh, do a whole bunch of renditions of Pollo. Because, I mean, he's an artist favorite. I mean, he's everybody loves Pollo. This is probably my favorite one. Easy to draw, but it's a picture of a hot-ass chick. She's wearing, like, no underwear, and she has a Pollo tattoo as her tramp stamp. And uh, <laughs> that's hilarious to me. Um, this one is also good. Pollo just taking this guy's eyes out. And that's why the art is from uh, Morning Glories. <laughs> um, so that's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, but definitely, this is a six-pack review. You do not get better than this in for a one single comic. I loved it. I loved it. You know, it's a must-pick up. This has got the six-pack. Thank you very much. Boom. Well, you know what? Speaking of which, that's a perfect transition into my segment. And I'll show you what exactly has more than a six-pack. Oh. Up next. Hello friends, my name's John, I'm from A Comic Book Look, and this is my segment called These Are a Few of My Favorite Things. I actually just mentioned that there were things better than six beer rating books, and I happen to have not one but two on my lap here. Joining me, of course, is Edgar the Bunny, and uh, with that we have my first one I wanted to look at with you, Dark Avengers slash Thunderbolts, completely off the record, 177. I ragged and ragged and ragged on this 176 last month because I was pissed that we were still doing the time traveling nonsense. Parker has decided as a writer, he heard my concerns and addressed them with a stone cold fist and I absolutely love him for that. This issue delivered because the cover it's already split. Doctor Doom is doom in the past and death in the future. Those are some words that really drew me in. It jumped off the shelf at me. I really actually, I really did like this issue. It's just, I, you know, I can't even begin to tell you, it's just kick-assery, for lack of a better word. We, we see a little bit of the time-traveling team, which, thank goodness, hopefully it's going to be coming to an end soon. We have Man-Thing in there, which is just an awesome character, and, you know, I, I, just, I was tickled pink to see him back. Um, and then we have the new Dark Avengers that we're getting familiar with. So, honestly, the Dark Avengers to Thunderbolts transition is really not much of a transition at all. It's the next step in evolution. Uh, seven out of six beers. But, the main, the main focus of these are a few of my favorite things segment is actually going to be Batman issue 11. And my god, I know, Snyder, I know you're off the market. Let's at least have a beer sometime. We can talk about it. What a great ride it's been, and the boys will, the boys will definitely agree with me. Batman has just, from the new 52 get-go, has just been fantastic. I have fallen in love with DC, and I've you know I've gotten off a few titles, but Batman has definitely been a strong arm steady for me. Um, right off the bat, the cover we're treated with a uh, if I mispronounce these names, I apologize, but uh, Capullo and then also a uh, Placentia just treated us to this sweet, elegant. It starts out really detailed at the bottom and just gets simple at the top. Um, Batman, you know, is just kind of like doing the pose of. I've just been getting my ass kicked for ten issues. I'm tired. I got bats of fire on the cover. But it's the color so rich and I just I, I reread it three times and I rarely reread my books like immediately after I buy them. But this is just a feather in this book's hat because I just I really liked this issue. Plus the banner at the top is not AVX. There's hope after all, it's the Dark Knight Rises, you know, for the movie coming up. So perfectly placed. This is the finale of the finale of the Court of Alls. I personally, you know, events tend to run a little bit long. Some of the uh, shows out there I've been watching have been kind of frustrated about the length of the event, but all in all, I mean, I, I really have liked it. The issue all in all contains this this battle, and I just, I wrote on my notes, WOW in all caps. Uh, we got Thomas um, versus Bruce, Thomas being the supposed long-lost brother of Bruce. When that was first unveiled, I was like, oh man, that's weak. But, you know, we're, we're really just not sure. Um... 
this uh, Thomas actually was going under an alias of Lincoln March. And so, Lincoln March, Thomas Wayne II, Jr., whatever, you know, that's to be determined still. So that's kind of a cool way uh, for, for it to be left off at. They, they duke it out. Batman almost goes through, you know, the turbine of a plane. It's just nonstop excitement. Like, I was like, this book's amazing, and crap, my, my break's over. Like, it took me a break and a half to read, and usually I can bust through, like, two books over a break. Quality is there, you guys. DC has definitely uh, proven itself worthy in my eyes with a title like this. Thank God, is all I gotta say. Um, I, you know, I just, I don't know. Just check it out, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the panels. And it's not just in the words. And that's one thing that Tom's been drilling in my head, is you just gotta really look at the art, look at what they're doing, look at how they're expressing. And uh, throughout the issue, Thomas the Bad Guy is talking about the reverse side of Gotham. Look at look into this mirror as, until he slams Bruce right into the side of a glass building, into the building. And, I mean, it's just, it's clever plays of words. And I just, you guys, this this is definitely getting a keg out of six beers, because I just, I totally dig it, hats off, hats off the, the, the detail that was put into the book, and DC, I just, I hope that you uh, give Scott Snyder a fat raise, because that was just awesome, so, anyways, this is my segment, cheers, keep it comics. Dude, that almost brought me to tears, John, that segment was beautiful, mm. oh my god, yeah, and those are definitely... I mean, to the heart, better than six-pack beer. Definitely. So I, I like. I it. could get drunk off those ratings. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. Smashing. Well, guys, um, you know, before we wrap up our show, we are going to announce our contest winners. We had um, plans to give a round, away a T-shirt. Um, we had a contest where that you could um, comment on our um, on the last video. What is your favorite moment in comics? And we would all pick one winner. And um, what you guys will have to do is email your guys' um, information to a comic book look at gmail.com. And now we will announce the winners. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I will definitely go first because my winner is actually the best cream of the crop. <laughs> That's a little friendly competition. Right? <laughs> no, we'll I see. actually, uh, you know, I actually uh, went with Nick the Stick. Um, Nick has been incredibly supportive. You know, I was. Uh, I was I started my own second podcast for a while and he was you know uh, you know commenting on that a little bit and that was oh, yeah. that was that was really cool you know and he was pretty supportive but you know he actually talked about you know liking uh, Green Wake I believe is what it's called yep. and uh, indie title and uh, the the creators were local for him in the beginning which I thought was really cool you know keeping it local getting to meet him and I just you know I thought that was really cool um, he also uh, I don't because he wrote he wrote a big one, you guys. So I <laughs> that to me I was like, holy smoke, somebody definitely put a ton of thought into this. Um he um Yeah. He he watches every episode. Um I remember he's you know, tweeted or, you know, made comments before where he's like, Oh, I'm getting my bowl of cereal ready to sit in front of him and watch him for yeah, half hour comic yeah. book look. And you know, Nick, you've always been really nice to chat to on a comic book look. Um yeah. I mean, uh, inveterate media junkies as well. You know, always respect what you're, you know, doing and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can't wait for you to get your comic book look t-shirt. Definitely. So send us your information to the Gmail, and we'll get that out to you ASAP. All right. Um, the one I would pick is A.J. Jackson. He had this uh, moment where um, it was during Batman uh, Under the Red Hood, the Jason Todd, Joker, Batman um, kind of fiasco where Jason Todd becomes the Red Hood. And he had this really good moment where Jason Todd tells the Joker off. And just the way that A.J. Uh, AJ Jackson has, you know, watched our show for a long time, commented right away um, on Tuesday. Just for that, I just appreciate it. And he's always been, um, you know, a great Spot viewer. Point, yeah. Always been, you know, had a great opinion. So Even when the episodes get produced a little bit late. Yeah. Uh, so he still knows exactly when they're coming on. So he's, he is a loyal viewer. Benny's definitely holding it down. Yeah, thanks, Benny. Yes, yeah. stand up straight, Benny. Sloucher. But yes, AJ Jackson. Thanks again for watching, man. Um, send us your, hit us up with your information. We'll send you out a shirt. Skyler. All right. I I was waiting for someone to talk about you know a movie that was their favorite moment or a convention, but so far everyone that has commented that watches our show their favorite moment was in books. Yep. And I'm going to have to give my shirt 
to my Kumpel, not only because he created the specter of Skylar for a little while, yeah. Yeah. He, he made me a mysterious figure. So thanks for that. <laughs> uh, we had a little fun, uh, kind of, you know, making the specter the, the ghost character of Skylar mm. before I kind of... And now everybody yeah. knows who I am. It's, I not, it's not nearly as fun. He's show. like the most fu- yeah. popular person on the show. Sucks. Yeah, he says yeah. way smarter things than yeah. us. And but you know, and he doesn't. Evident, like, he evidently doesn't drink as much as we do. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Even though he brings like beer That's every episode. Yeah, I, he's no. about to finish Dead off a six, six pack, pack here. <laughs> my dad's six pack of the month. Yep. Yeah. No. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah, but my shirt uh, to my Kumpel for his moment in comics. I don't remember what it was. I'm sorry. Remember the whole comic. It was Chew, but Army was 22, Chew, watching a okay, comic Chew. book look and getting away from the... Getting away from the big two. That's why you're getting the shirt. Getting away from Marvel and DC. I am all about that. Anybody that's going to go oh. to indie-created books, somewhere that gives the writers more power and control of their story, you get way better stories. They always come out better than totally when you that. have to run it through an editor... And then you have to run it through the Batman World editor, who you know watches over all the different Batman comics, the things that are going on in the Batman. And okay. then you have to bring it through the DC World editor, who makes sure that everything in the DC World is going you know correctly and together, and they'll all meld so that we can create these big events that everybody will buy all the books. Your overall story is my humble one for stepping away from the big two. That's <laughs> that's all we need to know for real. <laughs> Exactly. So, guys, thank you again for watching a comic book look. This is issue 50. We're hoping for 50 more. Um, We'll see you next Tuesday. Definitely. Anything else, boys? I'm good to go. Shut her down for us, Johnny boy. We're going to shut it down. Pow, like Godzilla. Anyways, (laughs) you guys know the drill. A comic book look at gmail.com. Get at us. Comment on our YouTube videos. Inveteratemediajunkies.com are part of the IMJ Nation for sure. Um, Tom, Skylar, John. We're going to rock it for another 50 till the wheels fall off. Keep it comics.